Welcome back, everybody, to On the Block Live with yours truly, Dillion Capadon. And I thank you for joining me each and every week right here on the Video Mix channel. And it is the second hour of the show, and you know what time that is, correct? It is the guest hour time. And I have none other than the founder and CEO of AmeriClaims Billing Incorporated and the new chairman of the Floyd Memorial University home of the lions, Mr. William McCormick, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm happy to be with you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me on On The Block Live. And I am, I just wanted to salute you on the new position. And I know, I know with your leadership, it will be, we, our plans will be greatly appreciated. I, I'm, I'm, I'm more than sure that you will take us to the promised land, along with Mr. Dr. Hodrick. <laughs> yeah, well, I can tell you, it is a, a fascinating opportunity to work along some very astute uh, members of the Board of Trustees and the administration led by Dr. Hardrick. Uh, for me, being an alumnus, uh, formal national alumni president, uh, to class president, uh, to, class to president, student, student athlete. Student it's athlete. like I'm reliving, it's like an, I'm opportunity reliving an opportunity to, to be on campus be on campus again. And I'm excited for and this excited opportunity. For this I'm, opportunity. Thankful for I'm thankful for the trust that the members of the board of trustees, of the board have, trustees in have in me to, uh, help, to set uh, help set the direction, strategic direction for the university. For the university. So let me ask you, um, as a member of the board of trustees, there are responsibilities and prudent decisions to be made. And that will expand and sustain our historical representation. What are some of the plans for FMU? Well, uh, just, well, a, couple uh, just weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, we uh, we uh, approved a budget, approved to, the budget be to, to, carry to carry out the 2020, the 2020 and 2021, and 2021 fiscal year. Fiscal year. And part of the, part uh, of the approval, uh, approval uh, includes uh, programming, includes programming uh, to enhance uh, scholastic uh, opportunity for students uh, to get majors and opportunities that are going to give them, you know, uh, right for employment. Uh, we uh, expanded the brand of the university into the greater community. Um, and but the whole goal behind this these prudent decisions, as you um, mentioned, is that we want to create a flagship reputation, so that we're involved in our community. Uh, we are supporting our uh, our young people to matriculate on campus and graduate in in, uh, in in high numbers, so they can go out and be a representation of what leadership, service, and character represents. Uh, in addition, um, part of the new initiative of acquiring more grant funding to do more community-based activity like a social justice center, um, uh, expanding the music department. We have some very robust um, opportunities coming down the pipeline from offering advanced health care degrees. You know, that's been my field for 32 years. So um, yes, yes. imagine having, you know, bright physician assistants coming from your HBCU and come back and serve your community uh, and then get those like that. administrators in health care. So we're expanding on those opportunities and um, we're going to be um, as I say, you're not right for place very, in a very short order. In a very short order. I like that. I like that. <laughs> well, as you know, I have to go to this area. It is a new day in FMU. Your quote, today, the repo for football campus on Florida Memorial University will provide new and exciting opportunities for the students as well as positively impacting our local community. What expectations do you and the Board of Trustees have for the rebirth of the Florida Memorial University Lions? Well, I can tell you, there's nothing like a hungry lion coming out of the jungle. And part of, <laughs> of that hunt uh, is that we want every single lion and lioness to excel on and off the field. Uh -huh. For those who are on the field, we're asking for them to understand what does teamwork means, what does competition represents, and then what does a family creating a strategy to create victory, what does that really mean? And those uh -huh. students who are off the field, the ones that are cheering for them, creating a sense of pride, a pride that they will carry, you know, 
from that moment forward for the rest of their lives, things that will be memorable. And, and that's what we expected to enhance that whole pride momentum that we know will be um, very well received, uh, not only on campus, but also in our community. Um, it, it's, it's been announced that we, for the first time in, in uh -huh. our whole entire history, uh, particularly in South Florida, we will be doing a contract with Walmart to carry our paraphernalia in Walmart. I mean, this wow. is these are the meets and bounds that we're doing. So that way our community can now purchase a prayer with Florida Mario on it and they can wow. show their support to us as well. Wow. Well, well, you, 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 I know you see it, right? I, 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 I just, see you I wearing your paraphernalia. Know. You're very proud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a diehard lion, trust the summa cum laude, but you know, I'm a diehard lion. Also, now I see uh, my, my mom and dad is a rattler. So, you know, I, I had a little HBCU, you little rattle, little, little battles back, you know, a couple of few years ago. But anyway, I see that uh, BCU, Bethune Cookman, uh, Florida, uh, Fam, FAMU, and a host of others are switching from the MEAC to the SWAC. Now, do you think Florida Memorial will eventually? get out of the Sun Conference and go to maybe the MEAC or the SWAC? Have that have that conversation been lingering around of the board of trustees? Well, it's, it's kind of early now to determine. Uh, the athletic director is doing a fantastic job in coordinating the athletic activities. Um, being that this is, football is, you know, it's, it's very well, you know, spotlighted. I mean, it's a, it's a program that win, lose, or draw, people have expectations for football season. And part of that expectation on this, and during the season also, you know, creates a level of competition. As we get better, as we, you know, learn more about the current conference we're in, uh, who knows? Uh -huh. We could remain there or we can go to other opportunities that is presented to us. We do know we're going to be competitive wherever All conference right. and whenever we play. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> well, I, I'll second that. I definitely second that. Now, due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, do you think it will be any effect on the school's enrollment as well as the football game attendances? Well, you know, or any uh, sports uh, for that factor? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been in healthcare, as I mentioned earlier, 32 years. And when you have such a a uh, public health crisis that we have with the COVID-19, you I mean, you can only prepare for rebounding. You can't prepare for the pandemic because once it happens, you got to figure out how to rebound. And we're no different than any other institution or organization across the country uh, preparing. Um, there will be some, some impact, of course, because you don't have an answer for every single family and their involvement with the pandemic as well. But what we have done is made a commitment to ensure that our campus uh, is safe for our students, our faculty, our staff, administration. Uh, we want to make sure that was our number one priority. Uh, the, the facility management team did everything uh, according to CDC guidelines to nice. ensure and maintain the campus, uh, you know, into you know the guidelines that they've laid out that organizations of our size need to have in place. They've done a fantastic job in getting prepared and maintaining uh, the social distancing, nice. uh, the testing, all of that. I mean, we did not have one positive, uh, you know, test on our campus. And we have some students who couldn't, uh, for whatever reason, were not able to leave to go home. And we maintained the campus safe for them and it gave them an opportunity to continue to matriculate even during the shutdown so we we've extended nice. our, our reach and uh we prepared and um going forward we'll continue to you know go along with what you know what the expert says we, we don't mind following what the expert says mm -hmm. nice i love it i love it i love it now switching a little gears right now as you can see along with covid there's been some other things going along in our whole entire world with uh racial discrimination and racial injustice. Have you ever experienced any racism operating at the level of business you are at now? And if so, how did you resolve the issue? Well, I can tell you, uh, systemic racism has been around uh, longer than I've been born. Uh, and mm. it's been a process. It's been a, what I call a setback machine. It was, oh, it was wow. designed to operate so that certain people best because of the color of their skin uh, mm -hmm. would have these barriers and then it depends on how you work the machine. I mean, I grew up in mm -hmm. South Georgia. There were known and unknown conversations about your place, being in your place. Mm -hmm. So I experienced right. that as a child, I experienced it as a young adult, I experienced it as an adult. 
Um, mm-hmm. But what I was taught by my great grandmother who raised me mm-hmm. is that I'm as good or better than any other person and I shouldn't feel inferior about anything. Uh, I should mm-hmm. know my rights to stand and protect them. Uh, but more importantly, she always encouraged me to understand that I control the power of my knowledge. And if I gain right. it, then no one can take it from me. And I've lived by that Amen. even in my young life, in my professional life in healthcare. Uh, you know, I had some barriers to overcome, but I always go back to that, v- that, that, that th- those words from her who couldn't read and write, but she had the wisdom of a mighty lion. So having, under, having that kind of teaching got me through those tough times and I still use them today. Hey, I, I understand that. I tell you, definitely take that to the heart. Oh, man. But do you uh, have these conversations with your children about racism and police encounterments if they have any? Yeah, I mean, I have one daughter, Brittany, who is loving my life. And I've always told her that she comes from a DNA of victory. And um, mm-hmm. you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't give it up. You know? Yes. And uh, yes. And, and we win because we do what's right. We, we treat people right. We love. Uh, we don't care or hate, and we don't participate around you know people who in, indulge in those kind of what we call negative connotations. Uh, but Amen. I've been sharing with her, um, you know, being a you know a, a black woman. Uh, but hey, mm-hmm. you're smart, you're beautiful, mm-hmm. uh, and you have uh, no reason to feel that you're less than any other person. Treat people yeah. the way you want to be treated, not by just verbiage, but by your actions. And um, we we we've been blessed to have her grow and matriculate into her healthcare career. And um, you know what? She, she understands it. We have very vivid conversations. I, mean, I was, you know, previously the uh, immediate past president of Fort Lauderdale branch NAACP. So I, she, I had her around me in the trenches, and she understands. Mm-hmm. It. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. Well, I also have those conversations with mine as well, and tell them to be uh, mindful of their actions and how to uh handle themselves accordingly in this in this world because the world is changing rapidly and you have to know how to handle yourself now i i, I can't thank you enough uh mr mccormick and if they how besides you being the chairman of the illustrious florida memorial university <laughs> how can they find you and what other services um do you provide yeah, well, I, I'm currently the uh, founder and CEO of AmeriClaims Building. We are the premier medical building company. We serve clients um, in 32 states across the country. Uh, we're located right here in South Florida. Um, you can reach me at www.americlaimsbuilding.com is our, our website. Again, www.americlaimsbuilding.com. Um, and you know what? If I can be of any assistance to any medical pr- practitioner, uh, or you know, healthcare facility that needs to get uh, paid. They want to advocate, you know, fighting to ensure they get compensated for the work they do and 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 and, and deal with these insurance companies. Then I'm your man, and I have a team of 21 well-trained professionals who, on a daily basis, go out and uh, we fight to make sure our providers and our clients are paid for what they do. Mm-hmm. And there you have it, the CEO and founder of AmeriClaims Billing, Mister. William McCormick. Listen up, get ready, ladies and gentlemen. Florida Memorial has rebirth and we are coming in full fledged. Thank you, sir, for your presence and gracing on the block live <laughs> television. And I surely appreciate you for all that you've done. And I'm looking forward to the plans that you have for Florida Memorial. And also, you know, I'm going to keep blowing up your phone for some mentorship. Just get ready because you are a man with you the have plan. My, you have my number. You have my number. Yes. I have no problem with that. Well, well, You'd be hard to get in touch with. Uh-huh. But, but I do respond. But I do respond. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Thank All you, right. sir, man. And have a great okay. day. I'll keep in touch. And also, you remember what I told you. I'm locking down the announcement, uh, a position for football. Get ready in all sports. <laughs> Let's let the lines roar. <laughs> Let's let the lines roar, man. I have a good one. Thank you, sir. Thank you.